Welcome to the Black Girls Heal podcast, where we talk about changing unavailable relationship patterns, healing unresolved trauma, and building a healthy relationship with first you and then others. Every episode, we will talk about actionable advice that you can apply today to break unhealthy patterns and grow your self-worth. I'm Sheena Tubbs. Let's begin. Hey, ladies. So, hi. <laughs> Um, I tried to record today's episode a couple of times and I am not going to do what I usually do when I'm in this place where it's hard for me to record an episode and literally it takes me all day, like from morning through afternoon, early evening when I start doing coaching calls with my students to re-record and figure out the right way to do it. To me, that just tells me that this isn't the week to record this topic. And um, I don't have something else that I want to record. So, but I did not want to go two weeks without having an episode. Not because, (laughs) not because we can't go two weeks. I mean, there's almost three years worth of podcast episodes that I know because y'all tell me that y'all will binge listen to and repeat listen to and just, you know, take notes and um, get support there. But I did want to touch base because I I have been thinking a lot about just the impact of diagnoses and how they can work for us. So the diagnosis that I have that I've talked about just a couple of times so far in the podcast um, and probably referenced it more times than a couple is ADHD or actually for me, ADD, so Attention Deficit Disorder, and um, how it's so important to allow yourself to work in the confines. Mm, Is confines the right word? It's really important that if you have a diagnosis, whether or not it's ADHD or autism or OCD or anxiety or bipolar disorder, or depression, or borderline personality disorder, or I don't know if I already said anxiety disorder, but um, general anxiety disorder or social anxiety, it's really important that you listen to yourself and what works for you, and you allow yourself the space to do those things. So for me and my ADHD, one of the best things that happened that also happened at a time that um, I didn't want it to happen, but it ended up being a blessing, is around fall of last year, I eliminated a lot of the things that I was using to give me to give me direction. So for me, that looks like I eliminated and stepped away from a lot of business connections. So people who I love, um, I I really love them actually. And um, I look forward to reconnecting to them. But I had to step away from business coaches. I had to step away from masterminds. I had to step away from um, a lot of podcasts, a lot of things that I was using to kind of help me figure out next steps because I wasn't actually listening to myself. And also, it was putting a lot of pressure on myself to show up in a way that didn't align with me. You know, as someone who has ADHD, um, the way that discipline looks for me or doesn't look for me will look different than how someone else may show up. The way that consistency is cultivated for some people does not look the same way for me. The way that creativity and creation and all of that works for other people does not work for me. And I was spending a lot of time and feeling so behind and feeling so out of whack because I was trying to do what other people were doing instead of looking at what works for me. And I think about those of us who may have anxiety or have been diagnosed with depression, or have OCD, or Tourette's, or eating disorders, addictions. I mean, even y'all, I'm talking about all these other disorders, and here on this podcast, I literally talk about intimacy disorders all the time, you know? So the way that relationships work for us versus other people, if we spend a lot of time 
trying to do what other people do instead of looking at what our sensitivities are, what our vulnerabilities are, and also what our strengths are, we're going to keep working ourselves and we're going to keep stressing ourselves out to reach a standard that was never actually created for us. So going back to this fall, when I eliminated all those voices and I actually was able to spend time with myself and I was actually able to let myself let go of deadlines, let myself let go of rules and just come home to me and get to know me and get to know what does me look like in the building of Black Girls Heal? What does me look like as a coach? What is the type of environment and setting that I actually want for my students versus what people have told me I should be doing? The, the freedom that I have felt has been enormous. The freedom, the personal space I've been able to give myself to take my time, to take longer than I thought I would. You know, one of the things with ADHD for me is whatever, however long I think something is going to take, it takes three times longer. And that's not just me saying it. Literally, I had someone on my team at one point who was like an operations manager. And a part of her job was to look to see how long tasks took. And so I would plan for a task then I would say, okay, this is going to take me longer. So I would add cushion time. And all of that, the time that I thought the task would take plus the cushion time, multiply that times three. <laughs> That's actually how long it took. <laughs> and so once I started to say, okay, if this is my reality, if this is what works for me, instead of me saying, okay, I got to get, I got to find the right planners or I got to find the right systems or the right timers to help me get in line once I started to work with, okay, this is what I know works for me, so I'm not going to make any promises that something's going to be done at a certain time. I've slipped once or twice with, with that, and I've seen what happens. But from that, like, there are so many things, y'all, that I have come in and I'm working on with y'all that I've been telling y'all about that are literally about to come out. But I'm not going to tell you how soon that is, and I'm not going to tell you what they are. Because <laughs> I have learned, I have learned that, it is best for me to give myself the space to work on these things and to create them and to not feel like I'm letting other people down. And um, and to allow myself to change my mind, you know, to be someone with ADHD is to be someone who is highly creative and highly responsive and also wants to do a million things at once. And sometimes in the in the brainstorming of that and in the excitement of that and the generation of that and in the planning of that, you figure out, okay, planning this was all that I really needed to do and now I really don't want to do it at all anymore. Or planning was all that I wanted to do, but now I'm going to let this marinate and wait for the right time. Um, or planning is this is what I want to do. Now let me actually take my time to actually work through it and to complete it. And I've talked on the podcast about how I am currently not medicated, not because I'm anti-medication, but because I've had some health conditions where um, doctors have been wary to give me any medication because they're stimulants. And so I have also, you know, been working on my own to to find ways to help myself create the life that I want with what what my current capacity is, right? So this episode is not an ADHD episode, even though ADHD only, even though many of you have who have told me that you have gone and gotten tested for ADHD um, and you are feeling a lot of relief now, now that you have answers, now you maybe you're on medication, now you're learning about executive skills. It has really freed you and I'm so, so happy for you. Um, As much as sometimes we can try to run away from labels, sometimes having a word to finally put together everything that you've been experiencing provides so much relief (laughs) because then you know it's not in your head, right? Like you know you haven't been making it up, that you haven't been, you know, a fuck up, that it hasn't been 
you're not a failure or whatever word you may have been playing around in your mind that that you've always been enough and here is something that you get to learn how to incorporate because there's superpowers and all of it so going back to what I was saying about this not being just an ADHD episode I really as I started talking I was like I want any woman any person who is listening to this who may have have a diagnosis or you may think you have one but you're afraid to get it checked out or you know you know you googled your symptoms and you're like oh this is looking a little bit like this I really want to encourage you to practice some self-love around this and to know that whatever it is does not define you I I am not ADHD or ADD um, that is not my identity. I am Sheena, who is talented, who is funny, who is kind, who is creative, who is a good mother, a good friend, who is all of these things, and I have ADHD. And you are not bipolar. You know, when people are saying, oh, she's so bipolar, you are not bipolar. You are an artist, you are generous, you are loving, you are reserved, you are thoughtful, you are curious, and you have bipolar disorder. And I think we need to learn how to externalize these things so that we don't feel so overwhelmed with them, but don't externalize it so much that we live in denial and we live in depression, not depression, but live in repression where because we're trying to ignore it and act like it doesn't exist, that it overtakes our lives in that way. Um, and it impacts our relationships and our functioning and our self-esteem, but to actually work with it. So I hope I hope that this little insert that did not have a main a main point, I hope that this touch this little touchstone helps anyone who may have needed it, um, anyone who's recently been working on your mental and emotional health and um, maybe taking breaks from medication, maybe taking breaks from seeing your therapist, seeing a psychiatrist, seeing a healer if you're not into just the Western definitions of mental health. But because you know, I'm very much about, I don't care who you talk to, but talk to somebody. I need you to go and talk to some expert who you trust that's going to help you move through what you need to move through. Whatever it is, I hope that you're doing it um, because you deserve to feel full and feel happy and know that you are worthy. Okay, so that's it for this week's episode. I will see y'all next week for real, for real. Well, no, see, there I go again. That is it for this week's episode. I hope that you are taking care of yourselves. <laughs> And I am sending you so much love. <laughs> and that's it for this week. All right, y'all take care. Hey, so thanks for listening to today's podcast. If you enjoy what you learned today, it doesn't have to stop here. Check out the Black Girls Heal website at blackgirlsheal.org for more resources to help you heal from intimacy disorders like love addiction and love avoidance. The best time to start or restart your healing journey is now. You can grab a free copy of our five-step roadmap to heal love addiction, love avoidance, and love deprivation by going to blackgirlsheal.org slash roadmap. And if you're on social media, feel free to follow us at Black Girls Heal on Instagram and Facebook.